Hello everyone and welcome to this Midas GTS NX webinar. Um, my name is Adam Kane. I'm going to be taking through proceedings today. I'm one of the technical support engineers at Midas UK. And I just want to do a quick sound check with everybody just to make sure you can hear me and visually see my screen. So if you could raise your hand or place a comment in the GoToMeeting dialog box, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I see a few of you have uh, raised your hand now. I'll just uh, go through and say what the, the title and everything like that. So this is Midas GTS NX. Well, I'm going to be taking through 3D geometry modeling, mesh generation and analysis for sequentially excavated tunnels. So we're just going to continue. Right, so just to go through some ground rules and general housekeeping. Uh, if you, I know you can hear me and you can see my screen, but if you want to maximize the screen, just click on the two overlaying boxes in the top right hand corner. And if your screensaver happens to kick in, either just wiggle your mouse or set it to off now in the settings. Additional uh, go to webinar uh, instructions you click the red arrow, it will compress it down to a narrow strip. If you'd like to ask any questions throughout, we will be able to answer them and there will be somebody on standby from the technical support team to answer any questions or we will send you an email after the webinar is finished. So just go through some of the contents that I'm going to be highlighting today. So just going to first of all talk about sequentially excavated methods you know, for shotcrete and things like that. Uh, the features of the sequential excavation method, the concepts of the sequential excavation method or SEM, uh, mesh generation, loads and boundary conditions and the post processing where we'll be jumping into the modeling space. So just to briefly talk about the sequential excavation method um, which is for tunnel construction and is also known as the or the new Austrian tunneling method which is the NATM or the SCL which is the sprayed concrete um, lining method um, with some modifications done to the original NATM method to make a, it suitable for applications in soft ground the SEM either by NATM or SCL can be used for practically any type of ground profile and hence it can support any type of tunnel sections be it circular, horseshoe, ellipsoid or any other irregular shape. Uh, in the SEM methods the ground also plays an important part in redistributing stresses around the tunnel cavity. Uh, the support requirements are more economical the SEM is well suited for applications in soft ground and in rock. So just uh, the SEM, the excavation drift cross-section for excavation. The time and duration at which supports are installed depends on the ground geology. Uh, for a good quality ground the maximum unsupported excavation length tends to be as much tends to be much higher than what is allowed for in the um, SEL method. Uh, the type of structural supports also depend on the ground type, be it rock bolts or rock bolts and shotcrete, which are used in strong to soft rock types of ground, whereas uh, steel ribs and lattice girders with shotcrete or cast in place or concrete segments or are used for mixed ground to soft ground situations. Uh, for tunnelling in competent rock even full face excavations can be achieved but in soft ground conditions the excavation face should be subdivided into heading, drifts and invert. Uh, supports are usually installed every other round for soft ground. Uh, the supports should be installed as soon as possible uh, so the minimum ground stand-up time essentially. So for poor ground conditions or to protect damage to adjacent structures due to soft ground and tunnelling, uh, ground improvements prior to on start of works as required. Uh, the recent examples was ground freezing underneath the Westminster Abbey during construction work for the London Underground. 
As it was mentioned in the last webinar, the predictions from a finite element software should always be checked uh, with the field measurements out on site. So the ground surrounding the excavation cavity is an important medium to redistribute the stresses. Uh, to stabilize the excavation in softer weak rock, the first pass of shotcrete lining is made up of uh, low stiffness so that it undergoes controlled deflections to mobilize the shear strength in the ground, but at the same time is stiff enough to provide structural support and prevent any spooling. Uh, since the shear strength in ground is mobilized and used as a support measure, stiff supports are not required, so stiff supports attracts more loads and hence they increase design cost so by using the inherent strength of the ground support requirements are kept to a minimum in the sequentially excavation method uh, the type of cross section chosen depends on the nature of the ground so uh, a, a curved linear shape is preferred to redistribute stresses due to the excavation. In competent rock ground inverts are normally flat but under soft ground conditions a rounded invert is chosen for a more gradual stress flow across the tunnel cross section. So the advancing tunnel face causes changes in the initial vertical and horizontal stress conditions of the virgin ground. At the tunnel face the stress flows in three ways around the tunnel opening, arching ahead of the tunnel excavation, behind it into the newly constructed initial lining in the longitudinal direction and to the sides of the opening in the perpendicular direction which I've just highlighted with the mouse. So such as the three-dimensional state of stress can only be analysed through a three-dimensional finite element analysis. So what we're going to do now is take you into the modelling space so I'm just going to show you a, a fully completed model of a sequential tunnel and I uh, just want to hide the ground conditions so that you can actually see the tunnel in behind so as you can see there, just hitting the ground conditions completely and you can see all the rock bolts and the, the galleries and the connecting tunnels and everything, you can see all of the the excavation and the segments of the ground conditions so I just want to turn on the shotcrete just to show just the shotcrete on its own and then just to show you the rock belts as well and the other shotcrete so as you see there that's the shotcrete layer and also the rock bolts in behind so this is just an overview of what I'm going to be modelling within the working space so just to just to basically show you everything and I'm just going to take you through and show you how easy it is to model this sequentially excavated tunnel in, with the intersections and everything so just to show you all the mesh and everything like that and switch everything back on take you to the different viewports and now I just want to take you back into the the presentation then we will be going back to the modeling space a bit later so depending on the ground conditions uh, different constitutive models can be used to model stress strain behavior in the soil or the rock. Uh, the Mohiculum or the Drucker Praga are good models to perform preliminary analysis. The Hock and Brown uh, models can be used to model nonlinear elastic stress strain behavior in rocks, uh, whereas more advanced material models such as the uh, modified Mohiculum with stress and cap hardening behavior and the Jardine for small strain stiffness can be used to model normal to soft over consolidated and stiff soils respectively so shotcrete is modeled as curved plate elements for 3d analysis the behavior can be considered as elastic or elasto perfectly plastic uh, if the ground quality is poor and stand up time is low the uh, shotcrete can be applied to the face as a temporary support which is then demolished as the the heading processes and it, it basically goes through the shotcrete layer 
the hardening of shotcrete over time can be simulated by boundary conditions. The soft shotcrete's modulus is taken as one third of its 28 day strength. Uh, rock bolts are modelled as truss elements. If there are steel lattice girders in place inside the shotcrete, then the combined stiffness of steel reinforcement and shotcrete is used as equivalent shotcrete stiffness. So what I'm going to do now is just take you back into the modelling space and I'm just going to show you the initial model so I just want to switch over to that in the bottom tab. So there's the initial model and you see all the, the surfaces, surfaces and everything they're going to be extruded and the planes are the lines that they're going to be extruded along. Uh, we can also bring this in from a AutoCAD file as well so you can actually bring in anything you've made in AutoCAD you can bring it straight into the modeling space and then carry out the extrude functions. So for now I'm just going to pick some surfaces and extrude them along a line. So I'm going to do that for all of these different sections and we just pick the start point and the end point and the length and you can just give it a preview and then you can see that geometry has actually been created so the solid element so I'm going to do the same with all the other solid elements we have in place so same again just select the surface and the start and end point which is the value and then hit the preview and then extrude it so I'm just going to do all of these so bear with me just showing you how quick and easy it is to move through everything Make sure I turn off the layer so it doesn't get confusing on which ones I've done and I haven't done. So first point, end point. Click on the little arrow to say we want the length that's chosen in the working window, preview it, and then just click OK. There you go, and that's all the actual the connecting galleries and everything nearly done. Two length and then okay. And that is every single one created already. Now I want to create the ground conditions around the outside of these. So just using the the surface at the bottom so I'm going to extrude that along the same plane as before right from the top to the bottom and then it's been created there right so that was all the, the actual surfaces that have been created the solid elements so just select the solid we just want to make that transparent so we can look straight through it and that means we can select everything So we just set the levels of transparency as well to make sure we can actually see the surface around the outside. So now I'm going to focus on the uh, the automatic intersection of the solids. So we're just going to generate the shared nodes at the the common faces between the different solids. So we're just going to select the auto connect. Now that's auto connected all of the galleries and all of the shapes. So you can visually straight, see straight through that, and now I want to check for the uh, the common nodal points. So we can give it an accuracy as well, just to make sure. And that's checked all of the nodal points there. Now we can look straight through the actual shape itself. Now I'm going to put a. So what I'm going to do now is now I've got the side. I'm going to create a rectangle over the one of the entrances to one of the galleries and then I'm going to use that in order to create splices through the solid object so that will create our stages going through so I'll check that's in the right place so that's in the right place and I want to uh, multiply this over the distance of the tunnel itself and then create the different segments 
So I'm just going to transform that and vector it over two points. And then just create a copy and make sure we've got the we can actually put the distance in. So four meters and want that duplicated twenty five times. So that's created it into the segments. Now I wanna using that I'm gonna select the two solids and then all of the uh, so just delete the first and the M1. So just selecting the solid, so just the top and bottom, and then using the surfaces um, just to separate them. So we can select it from the working tree to make it easier. So just draw in a box over all of them, and that's all of them selected. And then we just want to divide the touching faces as well, so any touching faces, and delete the original, and also uh, delete the tool. Is in the the first plate or the first face that's going to be splitting the element up. So I was just uh, bear with it a minute. Right, so as you can see that's all been split up. So all the solid elements are now been split up into their separate entities. Now we'll just focus on all of the other uh, tunnels as well. So we're just going to have a bit of a Blue Peter moment and here's one that I made earlier because I don't want you to take you through the same sequence over and over again. So in this model that all of the uh, segments have been divided so as you can see they're displayed that every single segment has been divided into its different solid parts and now what I want to do is do some the mesh generation for all of the solid elements. So just had a question come in, so just bear with me. It's gonna go over to the message window. Right, I just wanna bring it up. So can non horizontal ground layers be, be created? Uh, yes we can, yes we can cr create uh, horizontal ground layers. Uh, you can include borehole locations from a DXF file as well, making it easy to import and bring across. Uh, you can also define the ground layers by inputting the upper and lower bounds of each soil type. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show an example by using the bedding plane wizard. So I just want to highlight and give it a couple of values and a name. So just give it ground la layers, give it a name of one, and this will be each individual borehole. So I so just want to put in some of the values and add them. So just a you can add the depth of each one. So this is each soil layer going all the way down through. And there you go. So just want to create a second. And as you can see we could put a different value in a different location um, at a different point. So this would create the layers going across. And obviously the more layers that you create, so say if we've got four points instead of just the two that I'm creating, then you have a, will, you will have a more detailed uh, layer strata. So there's one more point. So I'm just going to give you the layers. The third one added, just want to preview that, and as you see, though I put them a bit lower, you can still see that you've got the actual the layers going from one point out to the, the three side points. So, and that's the actual the ground conditions being created. So I better get rid of those so it doesn't get in the way. So just get rid of those, just delete them now. So just select the uh, the surfaces and all geometry. I just want to delete that. Right. Right, 
Right. Let's go back to the original view. Now, before I do the meshing, I just want to take you back into the presentation. And then we'll continue. So in the 3D analysis, which is performed with the finite elements, the analysis requires uh, discreditization or the splitting up of the 3D model geometry with the finite elements. Uh, the mesh is generated for ground excavation volumes for the tunnels and the interconnections, uh, the shot creeks and also the rock bolts, so pretty much everything within the working space. Um, in a finite element mesh, elements behavior such as Curved plate for shotcrete is linked with its structural material property, so be it concrete. So it's going to go over into the modern space and show you how to mesh and show you all of the different structural elements and everything like that. So just to take out the uh, just some of the material and the different material types. So to show you the dialog box where we've got all the drop downs and the different model types as well. So obviously you've got Mahiculum and everything there different material models and also the shotcrete shell so I'll just show you the properties and the the material properties and everything like that and just how it's a uniform thickness and the different materials that are within there so we can change it and we can import from a excel file and we can also export to an excel file as well if you want to check the results or change anything <clears throat> so, so now I'm just going to go to the top view and then uh, mesh either end of the tunnel. So just want to select that. So just select by the solid. I just highlight the intersection between the gallery and the actual tunnel itself. Now I've just selected all. Just want to use the auto mesh function. So just set it at 1.5. And then just apply that, so the mesh will be automatically generated. Let's take a couple of moments. So with this window, as you can see, it's just meshing all the elements very quickly, and uh, it's created a Tetra mesh as well. It's so combining the two. I just want to bring everything back online. Just hide the the main body of the ground and do either end. Now let's uh, just carry that out quickly. Get through and then do the other end. It's all very fast and efficient. And then just a few down the middle. So just take them a few more, and then this, uh, once I've done all of these, then I'm going to switch over and show you the actual, the fully meshed model, and then we'll focus on extracting the shotcrete from the, or the shell elements from the solid elements, and then move on to look at the rock bolts as well. Once that's been done, so just go through all of these. As you can see, you've got a very fast frontal solver that meshes everything efficiently. And there you see all the meshes that have actually been, all the mesh has been created from the solid elements we previously had. So and you can see the, the detailed connection between the, the gallery and the tunnel intersect. I'm going to go over and just uh, go into the next model and here's the fully meshed <coughs> model now. So I just want to delete some of the ends where Once I've extracted the shotcrete elements, so I just do have the mesh, and then what we can do is convert or extract the shell elements, be it the, the shotcrete from the actual solid elements. Then we will end up with a shell at the end there, so just to quickly do that, once everything's selected. As you see, all of the the shell elements shell elements have been created. So 
I just want to select all of these and isolate them and then just show those. So now that I've got them, I'm going to go to the top view and just delete some of the ends. So that's selected. Let's go all the way around and select each one individually. So that just makes up the ends of the tunnels, the entrances. So I just want to select the base as well. So now they're deleted. Now I'm just going to select the, the bottom of each tunnel and delete that as well. I notice if you go one way then it will only select everything within that working space. If you go the other way with the mouse and create a dialog box then it will select absolutely everything. So you see the bases now will be selected. I just want to delete those as well. So now that's the tunnels that have been created with the shot creep and we have all our solid elements to split up as well. So we can generate all our construction sequences a bit later on. So now I'm going to generate the, the rock bolts, so I'm just going to select the one of the galleries or one of the tunnels and generate the set from there. So I'm just going to go down through the, the works tree and select one, bring on the template, so the curve template, and select all of them, so these are the, the rock bolts. There's RB, so first of all I want to mesh these, so just use the edge function and select the previous and then just want to generate a mesh so split up into you can split up into a number of divisions We're just going to select one and give it rock bolt one as well as a name apply it so that's uh, now meshed the rock bolts and now I'm going to translate them so they're in the middle of the section so it's going to move them uh, 3.5 meters And then just use the preview function as you see it's moved. So now that I've uh, moved these sections now I just want to copy them to make sure they're on every single section going throughout the or every single mesh set for the central tunnel connecting gallery. So it's my distance is seven and number of times thirteen. That goes throughout all the way to the other end and make sure that all these oh, just preview it so it's 15 we've got to go all the way to the end so that's the rock bolt that's been generated for each individual section going throughout so I'm just going to hide all the rock bolts that we've just generated now and then I'm going to uh, just show the main tunnel so I just want to turn all these off. So those have been turned off. I just want to select the main tunnel. So just go back to basic. Select everything. So that's all been selected. Just want to display this. So just show only. So now I just want to show the element coordinate system. So just go to nodes and then the element now in the So I just want to create a so you see they're all pointing outwards, going in the same direction. So I just want to make sure they're all uniform. Now I'm just going to create this is going to create the interface between the element and the at the end and the shot creep lining and also the ground conditions on the outside. So it's going to activate the ground conditions so just to bring them back online. Then we just show that interface. So now we've got the ground conditions I can create the interface between the ground and the shot creep lining. 
So just selecting the shell elements and the direction is normal and then we're just going to use the strength reduction factor of 0.7 and we just selected all the objects as you can see we've got 1536 objects selected which are all the plate elements along the outside of the tunnel or the shotcrete and you can see the interface so there is the interface between the two that's been generated so I zoom in a bit there and then just to bring everything back online now you can still see the interface between the the shotcrete lining and the ground conditions so I just want to go through the analysis and look at the boundary conditions so we're just going to create some use defined supports around the outside then we can automatically generate these so just to give it a name and ground supports and that's generated the ground conditions around the outside and all the boundary conditions so just uh, I just want to put some loading conditions on here as well and we can just put some a pressure load on the surface so just select the, the top and just <coughs> create a pressure load onto that surface and I've selected the right plane so as you can see that I just put a pressure load so just 50 kilonewtons preview it just to make sure it's there that pressure loads in place and just click OK right so so just want to create the gravity load as well a bit of self weight ok and now that's been generated for the whole model it's indicated with that red arrow I just want to add the construction stages so we just want to generate construction stage for the junction analysis and we can add different stages as well throughout and I want to go and show you the the next part of the modeling so just the just the next model and I want to show you the construction stages within here so you see that we can take it to the mesh view <coughs> and check on the different construction stages you see <coughs> I've generated all the different construction stages going throughout and put in all the different conditions so we've defined the water table as minus 100 and we've got the different stages and you can select what's active and what's inactive and I'm just going to flick through the construction stages and show them quickly so as you can see a different construction stage has got different active boundary conditions you can also see it, see it visually in the background what's being removed so the invert of the tunnel has been removed and then the, in the second stage it would be the lower section so I just want to flick through these in more detail just give you a more graphical representation so I just want to just quickly hide this mesh set right so now that I've visually got it on the screen I can flick through simulate all the different construction stages so we just go through one by one as you can see it's actually going through the construction stages and then you can see the shot crate and the rock bolts being put in place moving through the tunnel and then the next segment and so on and so forth as it goes throughout all the different construction stages So now I'm just looking at the post-processing mode, so just going to carry it through the analysis now. Take a couple of minutes, so now let's just carry out the analysis, just want to look at some of the results and look at some of the displacements. So we can look at these throughout the different construction stages, which I'm going to highlight now, so just to show you some of the total displacements. And as you see, we've got a, a bar down the bottom here that we can just 
quickly clip through and look at the different construction stages. So we can look at the real deformed or the undeformed shape as well. So there's the deformed shape and also the deformed shape with the existing as well so you can actually see how far it's uh, deformed. The Z direction. So now I want to look at the probe test so just to move on. I've got the probe dialog box and with this we can actually probe any point on the structure so be it the, the plate elements or the solid elements it doesn't matter and this will change throughout the construction stages as well so the values will all change if we so wish to go through the construction stages with the probe test you can also change the colour and everything like that just to give it a bit more of a user friendly feel you see the values changing so I just want to isolate the one of the tunnels and then we're just going to extract the results of the crown and uh, look at the ground mesh so just to make sure we're in the pre-processing so we can actually select everything from the, the model window so I just want to show you that so I'm going to Right, so back into the post processing and now we're just going to do a few more check out the displacements again so on the ground so you can see there throughout the construction stage you can see the stress is going through the ground as well just by using the works tree which is a quick and easy method of doing it <coughs> so we just want to look at the edge type and just change it over to the, the feature mesh and we can also look at the actual mesh as well the wireframe so we're just going to look at the crown now, we're just going to extract some of the results so just the displacement results and just learn through the totals I just want to set them, you can look through the different steps as well we could the the TZ so just to highlight the nose going down through the crown of the tunnel and just look at the table results or the tabulated results. Okay, those are all the results from the the crown. And you can see all the different nodes going across as well from the selected. And what we selected in the window. So I just want to highlight all of these and we can actually export them to an Excel sheet and show in a graphical representation. So that is the graphical representation, so they see the curve down down through through each individual step. I'm just gonna get rid of that one now quickly. Go back in. And I just want to show you the, the rock bolts. So just select the rock bolts and the, the mesh. So just to show only these, there we go, and I've isolated the rock bolts, you just want to see the forces, results, so I just want to go down to the bottom. So for the truss elements, so the actual forces, I can see that going throughout the different construction stages as well. All the connecting galleries there, and the actual the stresses. So now I'm just going to show only the, the shell elements and the structural forces and moments within these. So, so just uh, isolating the, the shotcrete layers and then looking at the, the bedding moments or the, going throughout each individual construction stage as you can see there are all the plate elements on the outside and the moments that are distributed throughout. looking for the next forces okay so throughout the construction stages so just pick one at random and the uh, shell element stresses and we can also look at the the von's miss as well so we're just going to look at the uh, 
the mesh again or the, the ground conditions and then show you an on-curve diagram so it's going back to the original showing only this so just look for the, uh, the mean effective pressures and just go back to the original view so we can just do the clipping planes through this as well so as you see you just move the clipping plane straight across and we do it in any angle and as you see it's quick and easy to move all the way through it and you can add the clipping planes as well so we can uh, combine them so as you can see there the clipping plane is going through two different surfaces showing the whole tunnel you can look at the different mesh and everything like that so as you can see visually it's uh, very good in minus GCS so just go quickly back um, so the original clipping planes just want to do a quickly go into the 49th construction stage and turn the, the mesh edge back on so there we go Move it slightly. Right, so just to go on, we just want to go to tools. I just want to show you the the export 3D PDF. So from this, we can generate a 3D report. I just want to highlight some of the areas, so I'll just bring it all up on screen. So what you can do, you can select any of these, go down through. So those are all the construction stages highlighted. So I've already generated the the three D report because we don't want to waste any time. So this has been generated. I just want to show you that I can flick off the the ground mesh and hide it you see it's all open as long as you've got Adobe 10 then you can open up this document you see there you can see all the construction stages and everything and all the different meshes you can flick through the different pages so they can see the mesh on this section and this is a, a a 15 page report so you've got all the different construction stages throughout so just the loads and the different construction stages so just the get the solid wireframe So these are all the results for the displacement throughout each individual construction stage. And you see the construction stage changing at the top, so construction stage 30 and then going through. So I just want to show you some neat features so you can like you can in GTS. Um, you can also do the clipping planes and everything, so here's some clipping planes through the object through the tunnels, to show you all the rock bolts and everything like that, and the connecting galleries and just uh, you can manipulate it in any fashion you wish basically, so you can switch all the solids on or the solid wireframe change any of the, the views, look at the real displacements um, do a measurement, so just a 3D mesh measurement from one end of the model to the other as you can see there and you can actually display that and edit it and then when you want to share it with someone you can here's a move that 3D report move the measurement around so then they come up in the works tree as well or 
type works tree at the side so you can actually see the measurement and bring it on board. So now I've shown you the 3D PDF, I'm just going to take you back into the presentation and then close. So I've just gone through all of these within the modelling space. So that was all the loading conditions, self weight, surcharge and water pressures and supported conditions for the boundary conditions. Then went through the construction stages and briefly tapped on what you could do and you can also concentrate on the nonlinear analysis controls. We also went through the post processing for the results extraction, the settlement profiles and the forces and moments and then we even looked at the 3D report at the end. So just want to check the question box and make sure we've answered everything. So just had a, a few more coming on, I'm going to answer a few of these. So is it possible to generate high order elements? Uh, yes you can generate second order elements and the hetero, tetra and pentra solid planner elements can be generated. So I'm just going to go back into the this software and just show you that quickly. So I just want to close that dialog box Let's go through the, the pre-processing and I'm just going to show you how to quickly do this. So creating the second order element, so look at the 3D. So just to generate the mesh and we've got the, the mesh controller and you can generate the higher order elements here by ticking on the box before you generate the mesh itself. So in GTS NX we have two automatic mesh systems which are the default Tetra which uh, and a hybrid which generates a combination of hexa, tetra and penta elements. So the next question is how are the interface properties defined? So the the interface properties can be defined between a line element for example a beam or a planet element or a wall and the adjacent uh, soil so the user does not have to define physical thickness of the interface manually uh, there's two different modes you can use uh, which is the wizard input uh, which is the reduction with the reduction factor for C and phi and then the uh, property box which is the input of the stiffness in normal and the shear direction for C and phi. So just to highlight these in the dialog boxes. So it's giving us some values going all the way down through and the friction angle and everything like that. And just uh, do the tick on the interface. So I'm just going to take the one final question. So, how are the nodal connections between shotcrete and ground? Or how are the nodal connections between the shotcrete and the ground? Uh, is how is it guaranteed? I think that says. So the uh, the shotcrete elements are extracted from the face of the tunnel solid elements, which are demonstrated in the throughout the the GUI and the user interface. Uh, so the nodes are automatically coincident, uh, created between the two in the same place. So now I've answered a few of the questions, so I'll answer the rest in an email form because we've run out of time. So just to close, if you, uh, if you do want a bespoke presentation or demonstration of the software in your office, then obviously just call the number on the screen or contact us via email. We'd be happy to come along and talk to you. Uh, my name's been Adam Kane, and I'd like to thank you for participating in this uh, webinar. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. And make sure you check out all of our YouTube content and all other additional online services that we provide. Okay, thank you.